Today is the 25th anniversary of the deadly May 3rd, 1999 tornadoes in Oklahoma. 74 tornadoes in that outbreak, one of them an F5 that tracked through Oklahoma City. The outbreak injured almost 1,000, 46 dead, and over a billion dollars in damage. Nothing like that today, but the Southern Plains has been active. This boundary here helping to produce supercells yesterday that tracked through the Abilene area. That boundary is still there today, and the dry line pretty far to the west around Midland and Pecos. And then from the northwest, we've got this new Pacific weather system moving through Colorado, and an even stronger one poised to move into California over the weekend, and that will be quite a strong one. Let's take a look up in the Pacific and Alaska just very quickly. Some cold air making its way across the Brooks Range and into the Northwest Territories, but temperatures in the teens and 20s. Cold air persists in northern Canada, temperatures in the teens and 20s there as well. Some of that cold air filtering into the Canadian prairies, temperatures close to freezing in Manitoba and Saskatchewan, occluded low in Ontario. Then as we go south into the eastern U.S., we pick up this triple point in Michigan, warm sector across Ohio and Indiana, with a cold front moving through the Corn Belt. To really understand what's going on, we need to look at the small-scale picture. And what we see here is moisture making its way into the southern Caprock. Dew points pretty close to 70 degrees. That's some very rich moisture from Brownwood up to Abilene. Storms already breaking out near Sweetwater. And as we go further west, we get into the air behind the dry line. Looks like it's just cleared Midland. They're down to 52 dew point, 50 dew point at Fort Stockton. See if we can, can get any more data there. Yeah, very dry 21 degrees at Wink, but it rises to 60 at Big Spring. So that does tell you where that dry line is located. As we go further north, you can see the temperatures drop from 91 to 82 and 73, and even 69 at Amarillo. So that's that frontal boundary, located roughly somewhat like that. So the dry line frontal boundary intersection right in this area here, and these storms forming right there in that wedge of higher theta E air. The satellite imagery provides another perspective. And here, once again, similar to Wednesday, we can see a difference in the air masses. On one side, we've got this deeper convective cloud cover right there. That's moderate to towering cumulus elements. And then up here, further to the north up to Caprock, we've got this flatter transverse banding. This is all stratus and stratocumulus. Not talking about this white stuff here, that's going to be higher stratocumulus and altocumulus, but we're talking about these streaks that run southeast to northwest, and there's quite a few of them, and you can see they've got a motion that kind of ripples to the southwest just a little bit, maybe to the west, yeah, especially right through there. That's going to be that light easterly flow east of this boundary. So that's a cool air mass that's going to be probably recycled outflow air making its way eastward and then merging up with this fresh flow of air coming out of the Gulf right up the central Texas region, the hill country, and on up into the Interstate 20 corridor. So right in there is where they meet. The dry line, there's a couple possible axes, one right there, another out here, a little bit of elevated towers with that one. But yeah, somewhere in here, this is going to be the dry line, definitely down south, looking like that. And of course, the storms go up along the nose of that Theta E ridge right there. And we can see that on the SPC experimental products. All right, so we go to that surface tab, and that's going to be right here where it says Theta E pressure and so on. And 
yeah, this is probably a little bit hard to read, but it's going to be these red and orange lines. They form this axis right there. Now I can show you a different picture. This is probably a little bit easier to read. There you go. This is hot off the press. This is the 18Z high resolution rapid refresh. And that shows that theta E ridge right there. Theta E, that's kind of a combination of both temperature and dew point. The higher the theta E, the further your lifted parcel to the right on the diagram, which is, you know, good if you want to get that high cape being realized in the form of strong updrafts. So right there, that's going to favor your strongest convection. And these counties here, I worked at uh, Dias Air Force Base right there, as a matter of fact. And we had a rule of thumb. You look for that little square county right there with a little cutoff thing on the southeast side. You go over two, and that gives you Abilene. So that's kind of how we find our way on those maps. Also, this right here, this drops down to just west of Abilene. That's another way we could tell. So this is going to be right around Sweetwater and Snyder. And the model here, if we follow it along going into the evening, breaks out convection around Sweetwater. And you can see this outflow boundary kicking out. This is all overturned air, bringing that mid-level air down to the surface. It's a little bit drier, and it forms this outflow bubble. Then, of course, we have the dry line further to the west and the frontal boundary on up towards Clovis. Anyway, the high-resolution rapid refresh breaks out this supercell in the Abilene area. This is just a you know simulation. It's not necessarily what's going to happen. But that propagates into the moisture axis right there, southward towards the San Angelo area. Then we get this convective cluster around San Angelo most of this evening. And gradually it dies off. That's going to be the last frame we have right there. But yeah, look at all that outflow there. That's all dumped by those storms that developed this afternoon and evening. So that gives you some idea what might happen as the afternoon and evening goes on. Checking in on the radar, the storms have formed a little bit west of the initial model indications. But the general trend over the afternoon should be very similar. And there you go, you can see that convection. There's a close up looking at the Sweetwater, Colorado City area right there along Interstate 20. Some good storms going up and that will continue through the evening. And some other cells further to the southwest around Fort Stockton. And we've got our first tornado warning on this cell near Robert Lee. Let's zoom in and take a closer look at that that is radar indicated at this time. The storm relative velocity, not really showing much at this moment, but about four minutes ago, some very strong gate-to-gate -gate shear right there. The mark that I put right there, that's gonna be the center of that rotation. And that does look like a very brief TVS. And uh, yeah, that's got open territory down to the south. So we should see that continue to cycle for the next hour or two. And there is quite a bit of moisture available, up to one and a half inch of precipitable water in southeast Texas and lesser amounts to the north and west. And so we're going to be seeing a couple of days of thunderstorms here going through the weekend. By later tomorrow night, up to 1.75 inch precipitable water in Fort Worth and Dallas. And then you can see these gradients firming up in the central plains going into Monday. That's going to be that upper level lift coming out into Kansas. So possibly severe thunderstorms and maybe tornadoes for Monday and maybe early Tuesday in parts of the Midwest. Then later next week, well, that moisture does not really go away. Maybe a continuation of chances of thunderstorms down there in Texas for late next week. So let's put it together since we already have weather breaking out in the Southern Plains. Going into tonight, we've got this frontal boundary moving through Nebraska and through the Denver area. Some cold air coming back in behind that with snows in the central Rockies and this very strong system coming into Oregon. We've already got winter weather advisories in the Sierras for Saturday above 5,000 feet. 
three to six inches of snow possible as that weather system passes through that area. So there it is. You can see that snow breaking out. There could be winds up to 100 miles an hour along the ridges there in the Sierras this weekend. And we've also got a chance of snow up there in northwestern California, down to 4,000 feet, and up in the Cascades as well, with two to five inches of snow possible. So definitely a very late winter weather event in the western U.S. Out here in the central plains, unsettled with another cold front making it in, the moisture continues flowing north tomorrow. And more storms breaking out in the same area of West Texas, the triple point around Midland. And SPC does have a enhanced severe weather risk around that area for tomorrow. For Sunday, the severe weather chances diminish a little bit. But we do have this MCS activity around Dallas overnight, Saturday night into Sunday. Meanwhile, winter weather in the Great Basin region and very high winds following in its wake. Then as we go into later Sunday and Monday, this is the severe weather event on the plains. That low-level jet will be established, strong lift coming out into the high plains, and the dry line involved as well. And most of the severe weather potential will be in central Kansas. Let's take a look at the jet stream level winds. Going into this evening, subtropical jet moving into West Texas, 50 to 60 knot flow. And then for tomorrow, continuing to increase 50 to 70 knots. And it looks like maybe a little bit of convective noise right there at Abilene. The area as a whole, about 60 to 70 knots. And we've got this very strong trough moving into California and Oregon. Now, it does look a little bit unusual because if you look at the temperatures in red, We've got this minus 50 warming to minus 40 at the center. This is actually a cold core low. So what's happening here? Well, we're up in the stratosphere. So the temperature indications are going to be flipped around backwards. This is actually a cold core system. We have to drop down to a lower level. And there at 500 millibars, we see that very cold core minus 20 surrounding this core of minus 30. So those are some very cold mid-level temperatures. Very steep lapse rates and that will help generate extensive shower activity throughout much of California, Nevada, Oregon, and especially in the mountains. So that will certainly have a big effect in that part of the country. The upper level low and the jet will continue to shift to the east and eventually into the Great Plains for Monday. So during the early afternoon Monday, you can see that strong flow coming out into Kansas and Nebraska, 100 knots right there. And that's going to be pretty close to where we're going to see much of the severe weather activity. Close to this negative tilt trough, close to the jet axis. So we're looking at basically this region right here. Subtropical jet down to the south. So if we can get any lift down there in Texas, any strong boundaries, we should see organized convection as well. For Tuesday, the jet remains pretty far to the north. Strong flow continues in Texas because the subtropical jet going like that. Polar front jet up to the north and very broad area of 70 to 90 knot flow, even 100 and 510 up there in Kansas. So quite a bit going on next week. Strong flow continuing through the remainder of the week and picks up even further for Friday as that jet sinks to the south. So a lot of severe weather chances here. Usually what shuts down the severe weather is when we have a big ridge moving in with the flow weakening on the Great Plains. But that is not what we have for next week. And there's a quick update before we close out. The storm of the day near Robert Lee at this time this is quite a supercell, very strong supercell indications, and that's tracking south-southeast. There's a possibility this could move into the San Angelo area. It's still a ways off. At this time, it looks like it may go east of there, but it is a threat for San Angelo. 
Anyway, I don't know if you can see it here, but it does have a hook that kind of wraps around like this. Might be a little more visible on the correlation coefficient. I don't know. can barely see that. But let's go over to the velocity. And there we see a pronounced TVS. Got 56 out, 68 in. So that is going to be about 130 knots of gate-to-gate -gate shear located right here with a very strong meso surrounding that. So that dot that I put there, that's going to correlate to the center of that hook. So this is definitely the kind of signature associated with large tornadoes. And I have not looked at any chaser video. I'm, I'm too busy putting this video together. But I'm sure there's probably some interesting video coming out of the storm. Anyway, as I mentioned, this will be a threat as it moves south-southeast. The other cells up to the north just forming clusters and not doing very much at this time. Let me animate that real quick. Yeah, we got a few left movers in there. And that's going to be on the back side of that outflow boundary. So, not much more to say about that. We'll just have to keep watching that, and in the meantime, I'm going to get this video posted as soon as possible. So let me start on that. And that's all for this edition of Forecast Lab. Severe weather coming up on Monday, and I'm going to try to go on live if it works out. So if you want to get access to that, head to our Patreon link, and there it is right there. And otherwise, we will see you back here on Wednesday. Take care. Bye-bye.